Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us. Today, we have a special Halloween treat for you. Our contributor, Theo Daly, will deep dive into how this scene was made, covering everything from lighting to compositing and treating us with a caustics trick that delivers real-time results. So let's jump in. So in this setup, I have essentially a hand that I've rigged to have uh, a little bit of animation, and there's not very much else in the scene. It's literally a plane with a noise that's animated, a spotlight, a few other lights, and sort of this back blocker, and it will give us this result. So I'm just going to quickly go through and break down sort of what's happening. Um, this is caustic, so you know I've just created a snapshot of it, uh, just so we can see that very quickly. Uh, but we'll just now go back to our regular rendering. So in here, you'll see that I have literally just this floating hand, uh, a spotlight on it, this back blocker, and this plane that is water. Uh, it's got a displacer on it with a little bit of animation speed and just change the dimensions just a little bit. Um, then it's just put in a sub div and this material itself, you know, it's just the stock water with uh, this dispersion. And um, that should be pretty much it because it didn't really matter for this one. And in here, I have two spotlights that are basically on top of each other. One is set to emit caustic photons with a whole bunch of uh, photons in there. Uh, no shadow, a little bit of volumetric uh, contribution scale because I have an environment in here. And it's not affecting diffuser specular. And then I have a duplicate of that light that is affecting uh, diffuser specular. Um, it doesn't have caustics on and it does have shadows. This way I can actually control how much of it's giving me caustics versus how much is actually lighting the scene. Other than that, I have a dome light in here that's uh, from HDR Haven, just the studio small. It's really, really uh, dim. And, uh, you know, that's pretty much all I needed to get this sort of setup. So, you know, if I turn these off, you'll see that it gets dark. And this is just, you know, giving you sort of the soft feel. Spotlights at to uh, 40. It changed the fall off angle a little bit, and then this is just the intensity and exposure. Uh, nothing else is really happening in here. The shadow, like I said, is set to 50. And then the other one that's uh, set to photons, you know, I have one, and like I said, I have 850,000 photons in here. I could have made it higher, but it seemed to work okay. And then I have um, none of it affecting the face specular, like I said. So when I turn it on, nothing really changes until I go to bucket mode, which, as you saw previously, will give you this. And then I have an environment scattering, so it fills in the scene with the contribution. Set the dome light. Camera is hidden, but essentially I have it sort of from underneath, and I've attached a, a vibrate uh, expression onto it. So it will subtly move, sort of like it's submerged underwater. So it just subtly bounces, uh, floats through it. And then I have this background just to block anything that's coming from the water from back there. Because basically from the camera view, it sort of closes off anything that could have been going from there. And then on my camera, the other thing I have is I tend to do this is just make a sphere that's hit into the render, but visible in scene. And it's just basically put to this pinky. So that's the part that's getting the most, uh, the sharpest. And then uh, going through the, um, okay, I have it en enabled. So my focus is set to the camera focus. I'm just dragging this into the focus object. And then, uh, have it set to 10, I change the shutter uh, blades. I had a bokeh on that I was playing with, and you can see it gives you sort of this dramatic aberration here. 
So it's like aberration from how far um, the depth of field is. So the sharper it is, the less okay, the more out of focus it is, the more you get. So I was just playing with that. Um, and then from there, you know, I just basically set it to render. Uh, remember again with bucket, you're going to be getting, you know, this result from it. Um, and then just sort of let it render and sort of saw what I got. Um, that way, you know, we got something that felt were real and natural. And then if I didn't like it, I would have to re-render and set that up again because it's just based on changing the noise of this water, this ocean, and seeing, you know, what different type of caustic effects I'll get and changing the speed and things like that. The other way of doing this actually is um, possibly faster. Um, it's not physically accurate, but, you know, we'll give you sort of a result that should be more favorable. So what I've done is set this up where I have this other set called Gobo. I'm just going to turn that on. Turn off Caustics. We don't need that any longer. And then let's just hide it. I'm just using render layers. It's just easier to sort of have this set up. And again, I'm going out into the perspective. And what I've done is this um, is sort of a parent null, and they're all attached um, to it. So they all are lighting the scene, but it's the same light multiplied times three. And all I've done is I changed it from white to the color to be tinted to blue, green, red, and slightly offset them. That way that they are each sort of contributing um, their full color, and then they'll get a chromatic aberration. Um, in shadows, I've softened it. There's no photons because this is just using a texture. So I've actually created a texture and set the animation, and I'll show you where I got that. So essentially, this is in Substance Player. I actually um, found this from someone who's far smarter than I am. His name's uh, Bruno Afonseca, and I'll sort of show you his uh, Gumroad. You know, he has all these interesting setups, and this is the one I was talking about, and it's actually free. Um, so it's just all these setups that he's created in Substance. Um, you can use a texture or anything else you'd, you'd wish. I just found this and started talking to him about it. So, you know, as you play in player, you get this, um, and you can change the frequency so it's slow or really, really quick. And then all I did was export this out as an image sequence and brought that into uh, Redshift and then just set that up. So if I press play, I get this. So if I turn them all off, and let's just turn one at a time, they're each contributing, like I said, they're full. But what I've done is in the volume, I've put a contribution scale to each of them. So this way I'm getting... Uh, one that's white, that's sort of giving me this atmosphere. And then each one is giving me, you know, the rays that you get through the ocean. And um, this is really the best way to get this done. Um, caustics won't give this to you, unfortunately. Um, it doesn't do volumetric caustics. So this way, when I have this, I can, you know, change the intensity of these. If I was like, hey, I want them to be you know, more obvious, I can just go through here and change contributions, and then I'll get more intense rays. Uh, so, but, you know, it gives you that, that feeling that you're going through the ocean. And you can see that there is the color um, separation happening because, as I said, that they're all under one null and they're targeted to the same um, area with a you know, a target tag, but since they're offset just a little bit from one another, they will um, give you sort of this slight feeling of aberration. So once I have that set up, and I'm, I'm, I'm happy about that, you know, I'm going to my render settings, and in my AOVs, um, I've set this up in a way where these lights, if you go to light group, I've created AOV light groups, so you just literally Click down and you say add new light group, and I just created names for them. So all of these live in the Gobo setup. Then I have the main lights that will sort of hit everything. And then I also have the caustic ones. And then in my AOVs, I can go here to 
my light groups, and I can literally click and specify which ones I want to render. So once I've rendered this out, I'll actually get separate light passes so I can recombine them. So I won't get all of this baked into one. It will be separate into, hey, this is just the caustics coming out, or hey, this is just the light gobo coming out. This is what would hit just the hand part and stuff like that. So I've already rendered this out, so I'll just jump to that and sort of show you the setup that I created to create these. Um, so again, it's the same passes. It's just now gone through comp. The biggest thing is, you know, you have your beauty, which looks clean. And, you know, I've just, you know, gone through bit by bit. This is all rendered out of ASUS. So I have my ASUS open color IO color converter setup. And then I've just set up an exposure, sort of like what you'd have on your uh, retro camera. And then, as you can see, I have my GoPro, you know, BGR, and I've, you know, set them up to be tinted even more and then offset them even more. So you get sort of this offset coloration. And then I have my GI reflection, so volume lighting. So if I turn on GI, you see it just illuminated that. Same thing with the reflection. The volumes, if I turn those on, you can see it gets really, really bright. But what I'm doing is then curving things down to get sort of this feel like it's in water. I have a lumetry that's just hitting the uh, shadows and midtones just a bit to push them a little bit into the uh, greens. And then I have a couple LUTs that are just mixing in to give you this feeling. And then I have a LUX that's just sort of uh, bringing it all together. That's pretty much the setup. Like, you know, I know I'm zipping through this, but really it's just my beauty with a few passes on top of it. And, you know, the volumetric, you know, I've put a wiggle on one of them so it would animate differently. Um, so, you know, this vibrates up and down through the light. Um, the gobos, like I said, like, you know, they're at 80%, but I could put them to 20%. You see, they get a lot softer, 80 this could have been animated as well. Um, they're all set to add. Almost everything in terms of passes is set to add once you've broken it out. And you know, the biggest thing is because I rendered those light groups, I get this as a clean render, and then I'm able to integrate that back on top to alter. You can do the same thing, like, you know, this is just rendering the beauty on its own. I have a mask on it just to compare, but like, this is the beauty. Know, on its own and then what i did is i have this mask and then below all i did was try to rematch these so they link up quite similarly and that way i have it all as one so here's what it looks like once it's been previewed ramp previewed and you can sort of see you know this is the uh, light gobo setup so this is with the texture being pushed through the light you know, I have complete control over every single pass, so I can make something stronger. Um, I can blur something out. I can color correct anything in here. It gives me, you know, full control of everything. Over here, we have the caustic setup, which looks quite similar. Um, the only difference in this scene setup is essentially I have the beauty main once again, where it's just clean. And then I have the GI reflection and the volumes. I Basis conversion, the looks, the LUT, the Lumetri, where I am just touching the color wheels, and I have the curves and exposure. And, you know, the one thing is just this caustics light. So that's that. Let's just hit there. If I was to just solo out on its own, you can see the pass itself looks sort of grainy. What I tend to do is just blur it a little bit, but that gives you sort of a sense of what's happening with the caustics. And this is what I meant by like, sometimes you have to render it multiple times because you may not like this specific movement that's happening from the ocean. So I rendered it a different way. And this one, you can see the light play is a little different. And again, this is just me changing that noise of the plane in 3D. So unfortunately, this is something you can't really preview that easily. You have to render it out and sort of see what it looks like. If you don't like it, 
and go back and try to re-render it again. Um, that's why you want to try to do smaller renders first, just see what you like, and then go for your final render. Um, same token, I could combine the two, so I could bring one in, put them together, see if that gives me a more interesting look where they're sort of dancing together one another. Um, the one thing with this setup, though, is I'll probably have to make one of them a little lighter uh, in transparency, just so it's not overly bright when I combine everything together, but let's just see. So, you know, there doesn't seem too bad. Like, I think the next thing is just to do a RAM preview and see what that looks like. There you have it. So this is combining the two, just seeing what would happen. And you can see that, you know, with the cost this way, it, it is accurate, but I wouldn't say that this is necessarily superior to the way of using the Gobo or Interferer. It's just totally depends on what you want to do. But, you know, for my interests, I think I like this one more. You know, it just gives me literally the eye can lead and we see, you know, this is sharper. And, you know, I, if I wanted to, I could even position that Gobo and sort of see in real time in 3D what's happening versus the other way of doing the caustics. You know, it's more accurate, but this way, at least, if I just come into 3D and just move this around, I'm getting instant updates, instant feedback. I know exactly what I'm doing. I know exactly where it's going. I have my target so I can even move the target to where I want it to be. It just all works together in tandem. So that's, I feel, you know, in this particular instance, what I would do. But, you know, again, there's other times where you'd want to do it the way where it's accurate using caustics. Um, it just totally depends on what your need is. So, again, I think that's, you know, sort of the, the whole beauty of this is, you know, we have many ways of doing the exact same thing and uh, they give you different results. But in the end, you know, I think once you bring it into comp and you understand that, you know, if you can split things out using AOVs, you have the power to control things. Now, this is literally just what the light from the gobos is doing. Literally what just the reflection in GI is doing. Just what the volumetrics are doing. And then, you know, recombining together and controlling that way, you know, I think you're going to have a very... Uh, smoother way of sort of controlling exactly what you need and if a director or client says like oh can we make this a little brighter or oh, i don't really like that color that one thing you know you can do mats for certain elements but again like it's much harder to relight something in post so this is just one way of giving yourself some more control and you know giving yourself a great look and you know that's about it so yeah, thanks